I hereby declare the annual town meeting for the town of Stockton for the year 2023 open. And we will take all of the articles in order, except I want to let you know that we've decided to move up the citizens' petition to uh, right after Article 7. I think it's important to have that. Well, we still have a good crowd here. Not leave it to the end of the meeting. Uh, before we start, I'm going to ask Jessica to go over a test uh, use of our clickers. Jessica? Good evening. Thank you very much, Mr. Moderator. So your test question, is this a little bit better? Okay, I'll get real close here. Uh, the test question that I'm going to ask you is, tonight is a great night for a town meeting. Press 1A for yes, 2B for no. You can enter your vote now. You'll have 15 seconds, which I'll start when I get back to my seat. To know that your vote has been counted, you'll see a little green light in the upper corner. You'll also see your choice selected. So again, the question that I'm asking you is tonight is a great night for a town meeting. Press 1A for yes, you agree with that statement. Press 2B for no, if you don't agree with that statement. Your 15 seconds will start now. test was a complete success. We had 144 vote. We had 129 saying yes, it was a great night for a meeting. <laughs> 15 wanted to be home watching the ball game. <laughs> With that, we'll move on to Article 1. Article 1, I move that the following officers be chosen for the year commencing July 1, 2023. Fence viewers, Gary Johnson and Christopher B. Marsden. Measures of wood, William Markin and, I'm sorry, William Markham and Mark Fatty. Measures of coal, H. Linden Searing and Nicholas F. Nadorf. Wires of sand and gravel, John Drake Donovan and Clinton Schneier. And finally, the field drivers, which as I understand is about cows, is uh, Gary Johnson. Article 1 has been moved and seconded. Is there any discussion? Seeing none, we'll proceed to the vote. All those in favor, please click A. One. One. All those opposed, please click two. This is going to be easy. 143, yes. No, no's. Article 2. Article 2. I move that the town accept all printed reports of the town officers, offices and committees as published in the NMO report. Did I hear a second? Article 2 has been moved and seconded. Is there any discussion? Seeing none, we'll proceed to the vote. All those in favor, please click 1. All those opposed, please click 2.
Once again, Article 3 has passed unanimously with 143 votes. Article number 4. No, Article number 3. I'm sorry. Ar that was Article number 2. <laughs> Article number 3. Article 3. I move that the town, pursuant to Chapter 41, Section 108 of the Massachusetts General Laws, fix the annual salary and compensation for all elected officers of the town for the fiscal year commencing July 1st, 2023, as follows. Moderator, $242. Select Board, Chair, $5,552. Two members at $4,545, totaling $9,090. Town Clerk. Fifty six thousand eight hundred and fifty six board of assessors chair three thousand nine hundred and eighty seven dollars and two members at three thousand one hundred and ninety three totaling six thousand three hundred and eighty six tree warden two thousand three hundred and eight Article 3 has been moved and seconded. Is there any discussion? In spite of my trying to rush in there and get my money quickly, we're going to vote on Article 3 now. All those in favor, please press 1. Opposed, 2. Article 3 has passed unanimously with 141 votes in favor. Article 4. Good evening, everybody. I would want to be sure that uh, everybody can hear me clearly. I want to speak slowly because uh, we have a little bit of information to cover. I'm Jay Bykowski, the chair of the Finance Committee, and I've been asked uh, to present Article 4, uh, which is the town's fiscal year 2024 operating budget. In this presentation, I will also be referring to Article 5, which is the Virtue Hills Regional School District operating budget, Article 6, which is the Virtue Hill Regional School District capital budget, and Article 7, uh, which is a uh, a, a an assessment for out of school uh, uh, vocational training and transportation, and uh, this ultimately these will all be included in the operating budget. And I believe the uh, moderator wants to take uh, the Article Four exclusive exclusive of education and then approve five, six, and seven separately. So here we go, Article, uh, Article 4. I'd like to, before I get started, particularly thank Michael Canales, our town administrator, as well as our department heads for their efforts in the development of this document. It's very complicated. In addition to which, I'd like to also thank our select board for their input, advice, and support of the process. And I'd like to make particular mention to our Finance Committee for their continuous interest, input, participation, as well as dedicated service. And uh, I'd like to also thank uh, the families of our Finance Committee who've let them go willingly to all of the meetings that we've had. Uh, we can't forget moderator Gary Johnson, who has appointed an exceptionally qualified Finance Committee possessing expertise in corporate as well as individual finance, in addition to several formally serving in governmental roles for the town of Stockbridge, and you certainly know who these folks are. And I'm going to introduce everybody from near to far uh, so that you know who's a member of the committee. 
Stephen Schatz, next to him, uh, Diane Rouse, next to her, Pam Boudreau, next to her, Georgia Mazin, next to her, Bill Vogt, next to him, Jim Balfance, and next to him, Ed Lane, and yours truly. Here we go, folks. Article 4, the operating budget. The overview for this budget, including education, is $11,686,559, representing an increase of $137,246, or 1.17% 1 over 2023. That's terrific. And exclusive of education, uh, the amount is $7,873,476, or a decrease, exclusive of education, of $84,365 from 2023. This operating budget includes a 2.5% cost of living uh, for non-union employees, and also a 2% cost of living for our union employees. Now, everybody has gotten a copy of this with the distribution when you signed in, and I'm gonna go through it section by section briefly. This is not gonna be certainly an all night affair. General government, if you look at that section, there were reductions in the selectmen's expenses, those are litigation expenses, town facilities, town facilities salaries where we have had uh, uh, a, uh, a retirement, Glendale solar maintenance, and this totals to an overall category reduction of $15,259. The next section, public safety. There you'll note increase in police salaries, expenses, and supplies, fire salaries, expenses, and supplies, and the fire department salaries includes the proposal of a full-time supplementary individual to work with Chief uh, Vittig. Uh, also, uh, this particular category, when we talk about uh, the expenses, we are talking about equipment maintenance, that's police and fire, and fuel costs, uh, which everybody is witnessing these things right now, every day. And also in the public safety section, uh, for those who may or may not be aware, Ned Baldwin has retired uh, May 1st, and Matt Keller is his replacement. And this section has experienced a category increase of $149,932, which is predominantly, uh, as we said, uh, salaries, expenses, and supplies. The next section, education. And I'm gonna make reference to this and ultimately they will be voted upon separately. Increases in Article 5, that's the Berkshire Hills Operating School District budget of $153,607 over fiscal year 23. Uh, though, those increases relate to salaries, benefits, utilities costs, and maintenance of our school system, okay? The next one, there was a decrease in the assessment to Stockbridge for the Berkshire Hills Regional School District capital budget of $11,997 from fiscal year 2023. And basically, in article number seven, Berkshire Hills uh, has received uh, an assessment of tuition and transportation of 80,000 for two out of district vocational training program students that includes transportation that will be studying at Taconic High School, okay? The increase in the overall educational budget, the increase in the overall educational budget is $221,610 and I mentioned to you the reasons for it. And we might add, you know, that every community has minimum local contribution that certain monies have to be applied for education or a school system. So that's, that's an important thing to bear in mind. 
Public works and facilities, the next category, increases in highway, water, and sewer salaries, as well as expenses, again, equipment maintenance and fuel costs, and supplies have increased in this section $31,622. Human services, you'll note, increases in forest and agriculture, and basically uh, these functions are added uh, to the human services to support the farmer's market, as well as the Council on Aging Salaries, and the total increase there is $27,322. Culture and Recreation uh, has increased $37,144 to support the operations of the Library and Tourism Committee, Stockbridge Tourism Committee. This one is extremely important, and this is critical to our budget, debt service. You'll notice in debt service that the principal and interest on the town offices was reduced $350,000 and $35,850 on the interest. Uh, that is paying off the loan on this building that we originated in 2013. In addition to which, the debt service for principal and interest on the water treatment plant was also reduced 60,000 principal, 6,000 interest, both related to the 2013 loan. So paying that down gives us considerable flexibility in the future as we start to develop different functions and roles and programs. We did have an increase in debt service uh, principal and interest for, you will recall, last year in May uh, of uh, 2022, the Park Street Pump Station renovation and upgrade. $40,000 of, of principal, 23,600 interest uh, for this function. What does that mean? That means the operating budget is reduced $347,329, and these uh, monies to pay this off came from sta the stabilization fund of the town. That's a, that's a great thing. Employee benefits, an increase in the county retirement contribution and health and dental uh, services and insurance, $19,153 is being proposed. And you'll notice uh, the unclassified expenses. That's a category if somebody decides to retire uh, mid, uh, mid year in an, un in an un unanticipated way that we didn't budget for, so we have funds to set aside. An increase of $13,051 is proposed uh, for 2024. Now, to recap again, and I like to repeat myself, when you get a little older, you repeat yourself. Uh, article number four, the operating budget, including education, was 11 million proposed $686,559, or $137,246 increase over 2023, a 1.17%. That's including education. And I had previously given you uh, the seven million figure uh, excluding education. Article number five, uh, that is the Berkshire Hills Regional School District operating budget, uh, which Mr. Moderator uh, will take a separate vote on, has increased $153,607 to three million six fifty four six ninety three over fiscal year 23. Article number six, the Berkshire Hills Regional Capital Budget Assessment uh, for Stockbridge has reduced uh, $11,997 or uh, amounts to $78,450, uh, which is proposed. And seven again uh, is the amount of money for the vocational training and transportation at Taconic of $80,000. All of these items, four, five, six, and seven have previously been reviewed and approved by the Finance Committee for presentation to this body 
uh, this evening. Uh, and I thank you very much for your patience and interest, and I turn the meeting over to Mr. Moderator. Thank you. I'm happy to do it. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, we'd like a motion to move approval of article number four. Moved and seconded. Uh, we call for a vote. If you vote for it, please press 1A. Okay? Did I hear the second? Yes, it was the second. Okay, we're now voting on Article 4 only. All those in favor, please press 1. All those opposed, please press 2. This is just Article 4. Total vote was oh. our town council is earning her pay tonight. We slipped right by discussion. Just in case someone wanted to comment on spending all that money. Is there any discussion? Seeing none, we're going to vote again. All those in favor, please press 1. All those opposed, press 2. Well, the discussion apparently had an effect. We went from 152 yes to 151. And we went from two no's to three. So now, entertain Article 5. Article 5. I move that the town raise and appropriate the sum of 3,654,000 $693 for the assessment of the Berkshire Hills Regional School District. Article 5 has been moved and seconded. Is there any discussion? Seeing none, we'll proceed to vote. All those in favor of Article 5, please press 1. Opposed, press 2. Article 5 has been passed, 149, yes, 7, no. Article 6, <clears throat> I move that the town raise and appropriate a sum of $78,450 to pay the town's share of the principal and interest due in the fiscal year commencing July 1st, 2023 for the financing of the Berkshire Hills Regional School District school building construction projects. Article 6 has been moved and seconded. Oh, I'm sorry. Article 6. Article 6 has been moved and seconded. All those in favor? It is, it is 7. Oh, discussion. You told me to speed the meeting up. <laughs> we did that. <laughs> is there any discussion on Article 6? 
Sally. How many kids in the school system are stopped? And who has that number? Peter? For those that didn't hear that, 114 for next year, the year we're talking about, and 118 this year. Any further discussion? Seeing none, we'll proceed to vote on Article 6. All those in favor, please say aye. I mean, I'm sorry. sorry. <laughs> the old days. I miss them. All those in favor, please press 1. All those opposed, press 2. <laughs> Article 6 is passed. 149, yes. 10, no. Article 7. Article 7, I move that the town raise and appropriate the sum of $80,000 to pay for the tuition and transportation to Taconic High School for its career exploratory programs. Sure. Article 7 has been moved and seconded. Is there any discussion? Seeing none, proceed to vote. All those in favor, please press 1. All those opposed? Please press two. Article seven has passed. point. We are stre streaming this meeting live on TV, so anyone that wants to speak from the crowd, if and when, would you please go to the mic over there on the side of the hall so everyone can hear back home what's being said. Otherwise, I guess I'd have to repeat everything. and That doesn't work. So, now we're going to go back to voting. No, we already voted. Now I'm going to read the results. Once again, 149 of you pressed 1, 9 pressed 2. Before we move on to Article 8, as I said, we're going to call up the citizens' petition. I believe Michael Rice Oisman is going to uh, present this article. Is this on? Yes. So I uh, put a petition that rather than the finance committee be appointed by the moderator, that the town shall start voting to elect the members on the finance committee. I'm proposing that we delete that the moderator appoints the finance committee and that rather than him appointed, that the town shall elect members of the finance committee. It's, I'm also saying that we delete within 30 days of the adoption of this section that the current members will complete their terms as specified and then run for membership on the committee in the election held that year if he or she so chooses. I'm also suggesting that the select board may appoint a member or alternate member to complete an unexpired term whenever a vacancy occurs. And the last part is to delete certain qualifications. An election shall not expire until a successor is 
elected. In other words, just that rather than our moderator appoint the members, that the town shall elect members, and when their terms end, then they can apply to uh, be elected. That, that's about it. All right, Michael, and those are the exact terms of everything you want to change in a bylaw. It has to be exact for a bylaw change, and I need a copy of it up here. Well, you want me to read the whole thing? Only the changes. Well, I'm reading the changes. Are, are there more? That the moderator shall appoint and the town shall elect. That the current members will complete their terms as specified and then run for membership on the committee in the election that's held that year if she or he so chooses. And that the select board may appoint a member or alternate member to complete an unexpired term whenever a vacancy occurs. Okay, so I've been informed that the motion that you're going to make should be to adopt these changes as you have read and as they appear in the town ward. So I, I would like the, to adopt these measures that I've mentioned. Okay, just say move to adopt. And then move to adopt. Thank you. Do I hear a second? Is there any discussion? Steve? <laughs> well, I'll try to make myself heard, although the microphone is... Here we go. Can you hear me in the back? Okay, thank you. Uh, I'm Steve Schatz, uh, North Church Street. And I'm standing here uh, in my own capacity, not as a member of the Finance Committee, uh, to uh, oppose uh, uh, this, uh, uh, the citizens' petition. And very simply, um, uh, I have, uh, I've worked with the Finance Committee uh, for six years when I was a member of the uh, select board and I've served now for six years as of tomorrow uh, on the finance committee itself. In that time I have uh, seen this board, <coughs> the finance committee rather, undertake three very significant uh, actions on behalf of the town. Uh, the first being uh, at the, um, the, with the leadership of Jean Rousseau, many of whom uh, you know, uh, you know Jean rather, many of you know him, I should say. Uh, Jean proposed uh, very early on in my term on the, uh, my first term on the select board that we fund the uh, post-employment uh, health benefits for our retirees, sometimes called OPEB in the arcane language of municipal finance. There was about a $4 million liability, and Gene saw that as a real detriment to the town's finances. Uh, eventually, uh, this body, the annual town meeting, started funding uh, OPEB liability uh, in the range of about $350,000 to, uh, to about $400,000 a year until we reached the point where we are now fully funded. We are only one of three communities in Massachusetts uh, to be fully funded. And that, the impetus for that action came from the Finance Committee. Uh, to be sure, the select board was very uh, appreciative of the, uh, of the idea and very supportive of it as well. Now, that action had an unintended benefit. The year after we voted, after the annual town meeting voted to approve the funding of OPEB, 
we had an exit interview with Standard & Poor's. Standard & Poor's is the rating agency that determines the bond rating for the town. The result of funding, beginning the funding of that liability, resulted in an increase in our bond rating. We went to a double A plus, uh, and we're probably the highest rating we will ever get for other reasons. And that results in a lowering of our borrowing costs from that year forward, about 2015, uh, for any bond financing that we do. Now, the dollar, of the percentage change uh, between AA, which is where we were, and AA plus is probably somewhere on the order of about 120 basis points annually. But when you figure that we have an outstanding bond indebtedness, uh, well in excess of $6 million, and this goes on for 20 years at a time, at, you know, with each bond, it represents real money. And this came about as a result of Gene's, at Gene's urging. I don't think he anticipated uh, that the bond rating uh, would go up, but it did. The next thing that happened was that the Finance Committee, along with the Select Board, became very concerned about the mantra, the financing mantra that this town had maintained for years of level funding. Level funding meant that we didn't spend money for infrastructure, for capital equipment, the result being that we had collapsing buildings, bridges, and equipment in our highway department that was barely usable at times. That changed. And we began to do strategic capital budgeting as a result of the influence of the, of the Finance Committee. Now, later on, as we approached, I shouldn't say approached, but with the lockdown from COVID, the Finance Committee was very concerned about the, the loss of revenue, the potential loss of revenue from our commercial sector and urged the select board to approve a special stabilization, a COVID stabilization fund. Fortunately, we didn't have to use it, and those funds are now being used uh, to fund capital projects and a reduction in the bond indebtedness, as you, as you heard earlier. And I guess my point is that we have a, a, a committee that has uh, unique uh, qualifications. We have people who have served on this committee with municipal bond experience, Gene being one of them. We have a current member who has similar kind of experience. We have people who are, who've owned their own businesses, people who are experienced in accounting and economics. Um, and I, I go back to the old expression that if it, don't, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Thank you very much. Thank you, Steve. Next. <clears throat> I'm John Heisen from uh, Butler Road. Uh, I would be very interested in learning about the history of the power in the moderator to appoint people to the Finance Committee. How did that, how did that come to be? I think it would have affect my thinking on it, because obviously at some point the decision maker, and I assume it was a decision made at a town meeting, that the moderator would appoint members of the Finance Committee. And in response to what Steve just said, certainly Steve has said things have really gone well under the present system, but it's not clear to me why they would not go as well under an elected system. What, what, what is the rationale, basically, either way? Anyone want to? Answer that question? I, I don't know the history myself. All I know is that the moderator before me, way back in history, Bob Minkler, the previous moderator also appointed the Finance Committee, and it was that way when I got here 40 some years ago, and I've been doing it ever since. I do know that in the Commonwealth of Massachusetts, it's up to the town to vote 
by bylaws that make that choice. Every town has a choice to elect or to have the moderator appoint. Some of our neighbors, for instance, Lennox, moderator appoints. Great Barrington, they elect theirs. Next. My name is Vicki Count. I'm a resident of Stockbridge. I'm reading this on behalf of a resident citizen who is not able to be here tonight. I'm a little closer, maybe turn it down. There we go. Unfortunately, I'm not going to be able to attend tonight's town meeting. I'm disappointed for many reasons, including not being able to speak in favor of the citizen's position submitted by Michael Roisman. When the bylaw was written giving the moderator the authority to appoint members of the Finance Committee, it's doubtful that they expected that the same person would serve over 40 years. It's time for a change to let the town voters select members of the Finance Committee. As the current members' terms expires, the seats will be on the ballot, and if they choose to, they can run as incumbents alongside other candidates for the position. The change does not mean that all members would immediately have to run for office. It's not personal and it's not about the current, com current committee members qualifications, which is what Chairman Jay Bukowski keeps talking about. It's about giving others a chance to run for a three-year term. The committee is advisory to the select board. One position of the opponents is that making the positions elected would make it a political body. Elections are democratic, not political. Best wishes, Anita Schwarmer. Next, Roxanne. Uh, Roxanne McCaffrey, 8 West Stockbridge Road. Um, I think uh, Steve Schatz, Steve Schatz, can you hear me better now? No? No? Okay. I think Steve gave the details. Um, I think one thing we need to remember here is that it is up to the towns. There is a variety of methods that this is done in various towns. What we have experienced here, year after year, for many decades, is extreme financial help. And I am very concerned about the idea that the um, select board should at some point possibly be appointing those people who will be advising them. I think that we have a good separation of church and state, shall I say. Um, but I do not understand why this would necessarily benefit us, particularly when we have other towns in our vicinity that do have financial difficulties, even though their finance committees are elected. I do know that Gary spends a lot of time, it's very difficult to get people to serve. It takes a lot of time, a lot of phone calls, a lot of polling of people. He does a very good job trying to keep our finance committee fairly diverse. And the idea that people are going to run, um, I'm just very concerned. People do not understand just how much work and dedication it takes to serve on our finance committee. And as Steve said, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. I think that this is uh, looking for a problem where we don't have one at the moment. Thank you. Charlie? I'm Charles Kenny from Five Meadow Road. Yeah, way louder. I'm Charles Kenny from Five Meta Road. <clears throat> Sorry. Can anybody hear me now? Yes. Maybe you won't want to. I don't. I'm Charles Kenny from Five Meta Road. And uh, I've been coming to these town meetings for over 40 years. And I've always been, I've always felt a bit of uh, confidence in the way our town's economics seem to be run. Now, I don't agree with the politics of a lot of the people on the Finance Committee, and I don't think that they can separate out their views just by saying at the end of whatever they say, but they do a very good job with the finances. Now, the 
Finance Committee and the economics of our town is the motor of our town. We need that intact. And they do a great job. There's no sense to do anything about that. But they don't steer the vehicle. They power the vehicle. The rest of us steer it. Next. Charlie? I'm sorry, just to be clear, they should just be appointed by Gary or the moderator from now on because they do a great job. <laughs> Thank you, Charlie. I'm Brent Wiggins. Um, I'm the town resident. Uh, Mr. Schatz laid out a, a case for the um, members of the Finance Committee and the job that they've done in recent years. He also gave us a bit of history before that, where the, the town's infrastructure was allowed to go to waste, that uh, our, our highway department vehicles were allowed to rust. This, this was also an appointed finance committee. This, these things will, will change over time, but the, the problem is a lack of accountability in the end. And the accountability we're talking about is facing the voters. Uh, what Mr. The case Mr. Schatz made sounds like a fine platform for members who would like to be elected to the board to stand on. Go before them, say, this is what we've done. This is what we propose to do. We've done a good job, reelect us. Uh, I, I don't see the risk involved in uh, electing our finance board members. And uh, well, that's all I have, thanks. Thank you. Dick? Hi, I'm uh, Richard Jackson, 47 Interlaken Road. Uh, I agree with Steve. Uh, it ain't broke, so why fix it? Uh, if we go back to when this town first started in the 18th century, and our way of government is being, was being put together, there was fear of faction. They didn't want to have parties. Well, things change, and you know where we are now. Uh, I think that we're much better off as a state than New York in that our judges in Massachusetts are appointed. They don't have to run for office. They don't have to cater to any political faction. Uh, in New York State, you see all judges are all running for office. I think that we're better off having a system where we can uh, count on expertise and count on Gary to be guided by others as well to find expertise. Uh, and I think there is a danger, I just uh, uh, disagree with the last speaker, uh, a danger of political faction becoming an element in what really is just a, should be a panel of experts. Thanks. Thank you, Dick. Ed Lane, uh, Three Willard Hill, speaking for myself, not as a member of the Finance Committee. I'm on the Finance Committee for one year. I've just been appointed about a year ago by Gary. And I have to tell you that although the Finance Committee is not the Council of Economic Advisors or the, or the Federal Reserve Board, what they are are appointed just like those other experts and those other types of committees, as opposed to being elected. And there's a reason for that. Now, I've been on the committee for about a year. I've attended every meeting. And I have to say that except for a couple of members of the select board, it is very rare for a member of the public to come and watch the discussion, of the deliberations that go on, the history of the members of the, of the Finance Committee comes out. And if that was substituted by people who were elected on popular vote, I believe the town would lose a great deal of expertise. It would be inappropriate, I think, from the point of view of having experts 
uh, assigned to the committee because it, when it's on a voted basis, it, there is a popular, popularity uh, approach to it as, as well as an understanding of people's background. So I would hope that you would note that um, the expertise here is such that, that um, you would want it to be continued. So that's, that's what I thought. Thank you, Ed. Any further discussion? Seeing none, we'll proceed to vote. And this is actually Article 20. All those in favor of Article 20, please press 1. All those of No. Okay. It's not an article. It is an article. It's a petition. All those in favor of adopting the petition, please press 1. All those opposed, please press 2. Is there a question? Is there a confusion? Michael? If you press one, you're in favor of Mr. Royceman's citizen's petition. If you press two, you're against it. Is that cleared up? Two is the status quo. Status quo would be two. Can we revolt? Yes. Jessica, press the magic button. We'll vote again. All those in favor of the citizens' petition to adopt, please press 1. All those in favor of the status quo, please press 2. Except for majority. The petition to adopt has been defeated. 44 yes, 118 no. We'll move on to Article 8. Yes, Denny? appropriate a sum of $1,198,826 from available special purpose stabilization fund pursuant to Massachusetts General Law, Chapter 40, Section 5B, for the purpose of funding the remaining debt service payments for the town office, principal and interest, and water treatment plant, principal and interest, and this requires a two-thirds vote. Thank you. Article 8 has been moved and seconded. Is there any discussion? Seeing none, we'll proceed to vote. All those in, far, in favor of Article 8, please press 1. All those opposed, 
Please press 2. Article 8 was passed unanimously, 146-0. Article 15? No, no. Nine. nine. I'm sorry, nine. Article 9. I move that the town amend the zoning bylaws by deleting the current section 6.8 sign regulations and replacing it with the new 6.8 sign regulations. This is also a two-thirds vote. Article 9 has been moved and seconded. Is there any discussion? Yes, John. John Hart, Rattlesnake Mountain Road. Um, I would like to know, being the, the text of which is available at the town clerk's office for Article 9 and Article 10, how many people actually went and read that text? Because if they didn't read it, then they probably really don't know what they're voting for. Uh, if anyone still doesn't uh, ha or hasn't read that and, and would like to, there's copies at the front desk. I think most people picked up one of everything, but if you didn't, you can go up there. Okay, Bill? I think it's the same point that was just made. How can we vote on this if we don't know how it's changed from the existing bylaw? There no, there's no indication of what the existing bylaw says and how this one changes it. Debbie? Kate Fletcher, I'm, uh, Kate. can you all hear me? No? Okay. Let's see if this is, is that better? You might just have to speak a little louder. Is that better? Can you hear me? There you go. Okay. How's that? Okay. Um, my name is Kate Fletcher, and I am chair of the planning board. Um, this bylaw, the sign bylaw, this is not a new sign bylaw. Uh, this bylaw, for those of you who remember Jack Spencer, For those of you who remember Jack Spencer, uh, sure thing. My name is Kate Fletcher. I'm chair of the planning board. And uh, this is not a new bylaw. It was introduced about 10 years ago. For those of you who remember Jack Spencer, he worked on it um, along with Bob Bartle. I don't know if Bob is here and, and Catherine Chester. And uh, overall, the bylaw does a really good job of protecting the town from signs for all, um, billboards, um, and you know, protecting the small town and, and rural outskirts character of the town. The goal in, in addressing this bylaw over the years, I noticed as a planning board member, that certain parts of it were causing confusion and creating a situation where really relatively simple requests were taking a lot longer than they needed to. So last year, um, last summer, I introduced the idea at planning board of addressing some of those, those issues. And so the goal was really to just make some parts of the bylaw, the wording a little clearer, 
um, and clarify, clarify things like jurisdiction, the planning board handles permanent signs, the select board handles temporary signs, and things like um, sandwich board signs, the idea being that uh, planning board members are not at the town hall nearly as often as select board members who are here more, meet more frequently and are here more regularly for, for town business. So these are really, um, the changes are administrative changes intended to make this bylaw easier for both board members and applicants alike. Um, as an example, uh, definitions which existed already at the beginning of the zoning bylaw, those that relate to this sign bylaw were moved to the beginning of the sign bylaw, so they're just right there for everybody to see. So um, this is, these are not, um, this does not re reflect major cha changes. It's, it's really just to make this a, a bylaw that's easier for, for folks to work with. And I hope you will support this. The, the planning board started working on it last summer um, at a public hearing. The planning board voted seven, s seven in favor, seven member board in favor of adopting these changes and the select board reviewed it and all three members voted in favor of adopting these changes as well. Thank you very much. Ed? How's this for volume? Decades ago when my father-in-law was Art Maskell, selectman in this town, he was very concerned with signs and at that time, his major concern was about illuminating of signs. At that time, I think there was a rule that it had to be incandescent lighting, no fluorescent lighting. Well, now with LEDs and everything that we have today, that's probably changed. But I don't see anything in these regulations relating to illuminated signs. I think it's rather important. You wouldn't want flashing illuminated signs, would you? Here we go. So under 6.8.5, uh, uh, oh, standard, 6, yeah, who said 6.8.6? .6? I want you on my board. <laughs> um, no sign shall be illuminated by other than shaded or indirect white light of constant intensity. No sign shall be illuminated by flashing, intermittent, rotating, or moving light or lights. Uh, no sh sign shall have any visibly moving parts or noise-making devices. No illuminated sign or lighting device shall be placed, directed, or beamed upon a public way or adjacent premises as to cause glare or reflection that may constitute a traffic hazard or nuisance. All lighting devices shall be installed to illuminate the sign at such an angle as to minimize light pollution. And we do have a lighting bylaw in our general bylaws, by the way, and that bylaw um, indicates that lighting is to be downward directed and it shouldn't um, spread beyond a certain point. They refer to lumens and so on. Thank you. <laughs> Any further discussion? John? I, I just have one question to the planning board. Um, we have a mobile gas station down here um, on the corner of Park Street and Route 7. And there's a whole window, probably six feet wide by about four and a half feet high, that is a sign advertising some beverage or something. And I would have thought that that would not be a legal sign in Stockbridge. Okay. Thank you, John. Complete registered. <laughs> Any further discussion? 
Seeing none, we'll proceed to vote. I will remind the voters this requires a two-thirds majority. All those in favor, please press one. All those opposed, please press two. Article nine. Article 9 has passed, 128 yes, 27 no. Article 10. Article, Article 10, I move that the town amend the bylaws by deleting the current Article 5 cemetery regulations and replacing them with a new Article 5 cemetery bylaws. Article 10 has been moved and seconded. Any discussion? Seeing none, we'll proceed to vote. What is that? A, no, is that discussion? Yeah. Yes. There is discussion. Louise Gachet, 39 Church Street. I do have a question similar to the question on the previous article. Is the text that is not included in this current uh, Article 5, like 1.7, does that mean it's still part of the article or not? Or just the text that is printed on the sheet at the front of the hall, that is literally all the text? Uh, yeah, this is the text in its entirety, but it does allow the Senator Commission to promulgate regulations which would address some of the missing text from the prior version. So this gives a little bit more flexibility. Okay, one of the things I wondered about was uh, essentially having discussion about people who are not residents, uh, having their, um, being able to be buried in the cemetery, filling up the available plots, and people who live in Stockbridge, die in Stockbridge, can't get buried in the Stockbridge Cemetery. I believe that the old bylaw uh, allowed any taxpayer to be buried in the cemetery. The new bylaw allows any homeowner to be buried in the cemetery. So you can't buy a one square foot. Is that not right? Oh, well, all right. Let, let, uh... How's this? How's this for Valiant? Okay. Very weird. Okay, we, we haven't changed the by that part of the bylaw has not changed from before. It's residents and or taxpayers. We haven't changed it. Okay? Does that clarify the question? Okay. Thank you. I'm Candace Curry, Vice Chair of the Cemetery Commission from Emerson Lane. And I just want to clarify something. 1.6, 1.7, or 1.8 are items that we are eliminating from the bylaws, and we will provide guidelines. These things are on monuments, markers, and plants in the cemetery. This would give the cemetery commission a little more control rather than bringing those types of items to this town meeting. So the types of things we're bringing to the town meeting are who can be buried in the cemetery, and uh, the number of people on the commission itself, we are proposing from nine, which is hard to get a quorum of nine, down to a commission of five people. So those are some of the changes we've been making. Thank you. Any further discussion? Seeing none, we'll proceed to vote. Voting on Article 10. All those in favor? Please press one. All those opposed, please press two.
Article 10 has passed. 133 yes, 14 no. Article 11. Article 11. I move that the town amend the zoning bylaw by adding a new section 6.31 residential inclusionary development. And this is two thirds vote. Article 11 has been moved and seconded. Is there any discussion? <laughs> Denny? Denny also, uh, Main Street. I feel that there should be more information about what we're voting on in the warrant item. Thank you. The Residential Inclusionary Bylaw is a bylaw uh, that has been widely adopted throughout the state of Massachusetts that ties uh, uh, the creation of housing units by developer at scale to the inclusion in those developments of a unit for affordable housing. In this bylaw, folks, if, for example, if uh, there were a luxury development of up to 19 units, uh, the developer would need that was approved by special permit, the developer would need to include one unit of affordable housing or pay uh, based on a formula of median family income a payment into the affordable housing trust fund. Stockbridge has three affordable housing um, uh, uh, developments, if you will, or, or, or uh, projects, whatever. Uh, one is Riverbrook, the second is uh, Heaton Court, and the third is Pinewoods. Uh, we've got a we've got a situation, for example, this year where uh, there was approximately five hundred thousand dollars in unfunded um, in unfunded uh, request for capital uh, at Dean Court, and we've seen estimates that there may be upwards of two to four million dollars in repairs needed at Pinewoods. So this bylaw would allow, uh, in the event that a uh, special permit were granted by what would likely be this select board it would allow for some payment uh, to, to then either go to support one of those three developments or to include in those developments a, a unit of affordable housing. Uh, I, I ran some numbers, for example, and uh, basically for every 50 million or so in, in, uh, in, uh, uh, in sale price of a development, it might result in five hundred thousand to a million dollars in pay in payment or one to two units of affordable housing. So that that's basically how it works. Sorry. I'm Charles Kenny from Meadow Road. I agree with Denny also. I'd like to make a motion that we table uh, Article Eleven pending uh, a meeting where we have in hand the text of the actual proposed zoning bylaw change. It is at the back of the table, Charlie. It's at, it's at the table in the back. It was included in the, the materials that everyone picked up. I'm sorry, I, then that's, I withdraw the motion. Hmm. Sorry about that. Uh, Mark Mills, 15 Cherry Street. I'm a member of the Affordable Housing Trust, and uh, I support this measure. Uh, as we've been looking into affordable housing in the town, there are very limited options for how we can increase the amount of affordable housing. Uh, many developers want to build million dollar houses uh, on uh, four acres of land and it's pretty hard for anybody who lives and works in the Berkshires to be able to be a part of that. So if we want to get some more affordable housing into the town, we have to pull all the levers that we can. This is one and it, it may never even come to pass because it only kicks in when there's more than 10 units in one development. And we don't see a lot of proposals for 10 or 20 or 30 units of housing coming into Stockbridge at once. But it is at least one option. And there are others that we're looking into. In many cases, it's just gonna be 
maybe getting a house that uh, the town takes over for taxes and working with Habitat for Humanity to fix it up and try and make it available for, uh, as affordable housing for a family. I mean, it's going to be slow, bit by bit, pieces like that. But I don't think we should turn down any of the options available. And in this case, we're probably looking at some very high-end uh, housing developments if it comes to this, if this comes to pass. And I think it's reasonable to have each of those new owners essentially pay a little bit more for their house so that one of the units can be affordable housing for somebody who lives and works in the Berkshires. I don't really see a downside to the proposal. Uh, maybe if I was a developer, I, I'd feel differently about it. But as somebody urging us to get more affordable housing, I think this is one tool that we can have in the toolkit. And uh, so I would urge you to support the measure. Patrick has put a lot of work in on this. I know the language seems a little complex, but the basic idea is you want to do a big development, you got to kick in some money to have some affordable housing as part of it. And I think the town should stand for that. Thank you. Sally? Yes, hi, I'm Sally Underwood Miller, 10 Rattlesnake Mountain Road. I'm also chair of the Community Preservation Commission. And this is something that we've wrestled with for all the years that we've been doing this, um, is to how to get affordable housing in town. Every year, people may know, I ask, how many kids are there in the school system? And I know that it's gone down by at least 50 kids in the school system. And part of the reason for that is that families cannot afford to move into Stockbridge. I know from my personal experience that there are problems everywhere in town and everywhere in the county of finding people to, um, to work in our various businesses. And part of that is that there's no affordable housing. We really, really need to address this issue and anything that we can do to try and make it a friendly community for families and make it so that people can afford to live in this town, uh, even for the developers. Uh, years ago on the Conservation Commission, we had um, a development for Elm Court, or not for Elm Court, I'm sorry, for the DeSisto De School. And they had this great idea about how they were gonna have this wonderful um, place for people to come and live, but they had no provisions for the people. They were going to have a farm and they were going to have all this stuff, but they had no provisions for the people to work at the farm. I don't know where they were, those people were going to come from. And this is going to be true with every big development like that. They're going to need people to do the grounds work. They're going to need people to be their electricians. They're going to need people for plumbers. And we need kids in this town. We need to be able to not have 100 and, what did you say, 15 kids for the entire school. Imagine that's pre-K through high school. Figure that out. There are no children in this town. Denny? Uh, thank you for the discussion. <laughs> Any further discussion? Seeing none. Proceed to vote. All those in favor of Article 11, please press one for yes, two for no. This will require two thirds majority to pass. Article 11 has passed, yeses 83%, noes 17%. Article 12. Article 12, I move that the town appropriate and transfer from available free cash the following expenses for the year as read by the moderator accepting those items held with each item to be considered a separate appropriation. Yes. No. As I read each one, 
Anyone that wants to discuss any of these, put up your hand, it'll be a hold. Otherwise, the, the rest will be part of the whole. Article 12, number one, transfer and appropriate $100,000 for the purpose of paying the interest of the town infrastructure issues project authorized by Article 7 of the annual town meeting of May 16, 2022. Number two, transfer and appropriate $50,000 for the purchase of funding engineering for town projects. Three, transfer and appropriate $90,000 for the purpose of funding turnout gear for the Stockbridge Fire Department. Number four, transfer and appropriate $1,200,000 for the purpose of funding various road reconstruction and repaving. Article five, to transfer and appropriate $25,000 for costs associated with negotiations for the rest of the river project along with Pittsfield, Lennox, Lee, Great Barrington, and Sheffield regarding the removal, removal of PVCs in the Housatonic River. Hold, you've got your hold. Article 12, number six, transfer and appropriate $15,000 for the purpose of funding short-term rental tracking software services. Number seven, transfer and appropriate $73,400 for the purpose of funding a chipper and chipper box for the highway department. Number eight, transfer and appropriate $25,000 for the purpose of funding design engineering and permitting for improvements to the boat ramp at the Stockbridge Bowl contingent to a $25,000 match from the Department of Conservation and Recreation. Number eight has a hold. Okay, so we have two holds. All right. Okay, first hold was uh, number five. Someone wants to discuss that? Denny, was that you? What? Oh, we got to do all of them? 13, article 13, too? No, no. Um, article 12? Yeah. Oh. Okay. Okay. Okay, so what we will do is vote now on the ones that were not held. So, first of all, is there any discussion on any of the others? No. All those? Patty? She wants to know if she put a hold on one, she skipped. Did they get two chances to hold? up to me, huh? Which one, Patty? Six. All right. Um, I don't know what the question is, but we'll find out. We will. Mr. Moderator, I'd like to move to a point of order here. Uh, I think that everyone who puts a hold or any other kind of uh, substantial change in the scheduling of, of our agenda tonight should come and be identified and uh, uh, make, a, make a motion to do whatever they want to do. Section six. Um, we'll try not to do that in the future. Uh, we do have to now vote on the five that had no holds. 
which would be number one, two, three, four, and seven. At this point, I would ask all those in favor of those, one, two, three, four, and seven, to press yes for number one, or two for no. Voting now. Article 12, items 1, 2, 3, 4, and 7 have passed by a count of 136, yes, 12, no. Number 5, we'll go in numerical order. Number 5, Denny. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Um, I apologize for earlier interruptions um, uh, because I'm not familiar with this new separation. Um, first of all, I appreciate uh, the service which uh, our rest of the river representative has, has put in on this. And um, at the, uh, so I would like, I would like to move that we table uh, this uh, section um, and um, subject to discussion here uh, as to the purpose of this, uh, what this money is going to be spent on um, as uh, one of the great problems for those of us who've been working on the river is transparent the question of transparency uh, which I understand that uh, the rest of the river committee uh, operates under certain constraints but uh, we in the town of Stockbridge do not so uh, that's that would be my motion that we table this uh, thank you okay did I hear a second all right, just so everyone knows, everyone knows, the motion to lay on the table is not debatable, not amendable, it requires a two-thirds majority vote to pass. And that's all that concerns us right now. So we have to vote immediately without any debate or amendments on whether we want to lay this matter to the table or to continue to discuss it at this time. So again, if you will vote, those in favor of laying this matter on the table, press yes or one. Those opposed, press two. The motion to lay on the table is lost, did not reach the two-thirds majority. Any further discussion on number five? Seeing none, we're gonna vote on these, each section separately. Okay. I move that the town appropriate $25,000 from free cash for the rest of river. Any further discussion? Steve? Uh, 
Uh, the only thing I'll say tonight, I'm Steve Schatz, uh, North Church Street. The only thing I'll say tonight is that for 10 years, uh, the town, uh, through the appropriations process, has approved uh, articles, uh, special articles, ranging from 10 to $35,000 annually to pay for consulting, that's engineering expenses, legal fees, and the fees of uh, Berkshire Regional Planning Commission, which acts as an agent and facilitator for the rest of the River Committee. During that period of time, I mean, I haven't served on that, that committee for all of the 10 years. George, served, uh, George Marsden uh, served originally uh, before she <clears throat> not so graciously asked me to do it. And uh, <laughs> you retired, that's right, yeah. <laughs> Uh, so I could get older by serving on the committee. Thank you. Um, it, the, uh, during that period of time, though, seriously, the, uh, uh, the select board and every one of them, from Bobby Flowers to Deb McMenemy to Chuck Gillette to Don Shabon to Terry Flynn to Patrick White to uh, Chucky Cardillo to uh, Jamie Minacci and to Roxanne McCaffrey have supported the efforts of the, the rest of the River Committee and I thank them all and I thank you as well. Thank you, Steve. Denny? Yes. Um, oops, excuse me. Um, Maybe next time just bend over. <laughs> <laughs> Don't carry this in a canoe. <laughs> uh, thank, thank you, Steve, for your 10 years of service. Um, in 1991, um, a group of citizens got together in Benno Friedman's kitchen in Sheffield and formed a group called the Housatonic River Initiative. And uh, my concern of the, uh, the group was founded solely to address the question of PCBs in the river and was to never accept money from General Electric as a donation. And since that time, uh, Housatonic River Initiative, along with other groups such as PCB removal in Pittsfield, uh, et cetera, um, healed from Connecticut, have worked diligently to hold GE and EPA, uh, Mass DEP and Mass DPH, uh, to the task of protecting this community uh, from a considerable threat to the health of the people here, and specifically in Stockbridge. And my concern is that uh, with the lack of transparency uh, guidelines, which Steve has had to navigate within, uh, it's been very difficult uh, for those of us in the community who know the river to give uh, testimony, uh, to add information uh, to the process of the uh, rest of the River Municipal Committee. And uh, uh, this, uh, some of the money uh, spent recently uh, by the committee uh, is, uh, I think, involved in a lawsuit uh, in opposition to uh, a, a, a suit brought against the EPA and GE um, by HRI and HEAL. And so I think it's important that the people of Stockbridge understand that there is a serious public health issue here in Stockbridge. 
and I've spoken about it at con the conservation before the select board, and and uh, it's a serious issue. And uh, thank you. Any further discussion? Section five, Article twelve. We can vote on this one individually. All those in favor of Section 5 of uh, Article 12, Section 5, please press 1 for yes, 2 for no. Article 12, Section 5 has passed. 118, yes. 30, no. Article 12, Section 6. Patty, still here? I move that the town appropriate $15,000 from free cash for short-term rental tracking software. Article 12, Section 6 has been moved and seconded. Discussion, Patty. I'm Patricia Andrew and I live on 11 Cherry Street in Stockbridge. Can you hear me? Maybe okay. up a little bit. Move up more? Is yeah. that better? Yes. Yeah. Um, I just wanted to ask, I know that there's rules and regulations for short-term rentals. Is it actually a bylaw? I can't remember. Yes. It is a bylaw. Okay. Um, could you explain to me, before we voted on this, what the rental tracking software services actually are and do? Hi. Uh, It's a, so the short term rentals, uh, short term rentals are, are required by the town bylaw to register with the town and also required by the state of Massachusetts to register for the purpose of collecting taxes that are paid to the town as well as the state. There's two main platforms that allow the town to simply track and gently nudge people to follow the rules. This has nothing to do with policy. This has to do with information. So one of those platforms is called GoGov. The other platform is called Granicus. We're gonna, if this passes, we'll evaluate which one to choose. But basically, these platforms do several things. One, they automate letting people know that there's a town bylaw. So for example, this would, you know, we, we have something like between 120 and 135 at any given time that are that are that were running as of February when Michael and I got a demo, and yet only 12 have registered with the town. Now we only know that number of uh, 120 to 35 because one of the platforms gave us a little report, but they wouldn't tell us where they were, saying this is how many you have. So this would basically automate the sending of a letter to the other folks saying you got to really register. Now more important, this platform would allow us to uh, understand which ones had registered with the state for the purpose of tax collection, because if someone's registered with the, the state, then they are, paying, um, they are paying their fair share of taxes, where if someone didn't register, then maybe they didn't realize they needed to, but they're not. And, uh, and I will just point out that the occupancy tax generates several hundred thousand dollars a year, actually a little more than that, uh, for the town. Finally, I think from the policy point of view, we're gonna have to figure out how much of these short-term rentals we wanna have, all right? And, I can tell you, I don't know the answer to that because I don't know at any given time how many we have. And this would allow us to understand whether it's too few or, or whether it's just about right or whether uh, it's growing too much. I do know that when we got a similar demo uh, in my first year, there were approximately 90 uh, short-term rentals in Stockbridge. And I believe that when we did the demo this year was 130. 130 or 135. 
So in about a year and a half, July 21 to February 23, we saw almost a 50% increase. And I think by the time it's this July, because there's a lot more rentals in the summer than there are the winter, it might even be more. I don't know what the right answer here is, but I know that it's a lot easier to make good decisions if you have good information. Does that answer your question? Yes, it does. Thank, Thank you. you. And I'm registered. <laughs> All right. All right. <laughs> Any further discussion on section six of article 12? Seeing none, we'll proceed to vote. All those in favor of article six, or of uh, section six, article 12, please press one for yes, or two for no. Article 12, Section 6 is passed by a vast majority. Only 16 voted against and 131. And 131 in favor. Last section under Article 12. Number 8, transfer. Oh, we need the motion. I move that the town appropriate $25,000 from free cash for the boat ramp at the Stockbridge Bowl. Did I hear a second? Article 12, Section 8. Jim. Uh, yes, Jim Ballfants uh, for Interlake and Road. Uh, this, you need a little background on this. Uh, we were approached with the Stockbridge Sportsman's Club uh, regarding the use of ARPA funds to begin uh, renovating and improving the Stockbridge uh, boat ramp. Now, I don't know of anybody in this town that wouldn't want to see that area improved. It's been going on for what, 15 plus years. The state keeps delaying and everything like that. We were told that they could use ARPA funds. The morning of the selectmen's meeting when we had that discussion, we found out that ARPA funds could not be used. And therefore it was proposed to use free cash. As I said at that meeting, there is a difference between ARPA funds and free cash. Free cash is your money. It's not free, you've already paid it. And I said at that time, and I say now, that I recommend defeating this for the simple reason that if we cannot use ARPA funds because it's state owned, the state of Massachusetts, which receives somewhere between 4.3 and 5.4 billion dollars, could fund 125,000, which is the estimated cost of that program. So I propose defeating this for free cash, asking our select board and our town administrator to contact the state of Massachusetts and ask for about one one hundredth percent of that five point four billion dollars instead of using our money. Twenty five thousand here, forty thousand here, seventy thousand, it adds up to real money. And that's the only reason that I oppose using free cash, because the state has the ARPA funds, and I think we should pursue the state. Secondly, they could act quickly on this. If you approve this tonight, the earliest you could start, even beginning this project, would be July. They could start immediately if we could get them to move. Thank you. All right. Uh, you want to make a point? You want to address this? All right. Patrick? So I, a little other history. First of all, um, in many ways, I agree with Jim. Uh, for about, for as long as I've been on the board, uh, the state has been promising through what they call the public access uh, uh, department to 
fund the improvements in the boat ramp. Now, when we say improvements, what that means is it's it's a uh, it's it's building up the the base, the concrete base, which right now is at an angle and gets really slick when the park that's under the water and people slip on it. It's also fixing the drainage. If you've been down there, you'll notice there's tremendous erosion underneath the bank of trees there. In fact, some of them, you can actually see half of the root system, all right? Three years they've been promising us that they would, they would, uh, they would repair this. Uh, it was on the list. Now, of course, my concern is one of those trees comes down and hits that harvester that, you know, uh, that someone might be on, or worse, or well, not worse yet, or also could potentially hit the kayakers who come in right in there. Or someone could slip and fall on the boat ramp. Now, I'm not saying we'd be liable because it's state-owned property, but it still would be a terrible thing. All right. So about four weeks ago, we learned that public access, the state group, said, no, we don't need money to do it. So at the last minute, you know, I reached out to town council and I said, could we use ARPA to fund some of this? And well, initially we thought maybe, but then due to some technicalities, we found we couldn't. Uh, as Jim said, the whole the entire project is $125,000. The only thing we're looking to fund is the $50,000 for engineering, of which the state would have to agree to pay half of. Now, the reason to vote against this is because it's outrageous that we have to spend our town's money to fund something that the state should be paying. But the reason to vote for it is we've already lost years and years and years, as Jim said, and we want to lose another year waiting for the state to possibly act. And I will point out to you that I called DCR, and I called Smitty, and I called Senator Mark, all three of them, since we had this meeting, and I haven't heard back from any of them, and I happen to be the chairman of the select board. So just letting you know. Thanks. Yeah, uh, Ronnie. Um, Ro Can you hear me? Ron Broker of Old Tree Farm Road and Chairman of the Conservation Commission. Ron Broker, Old Tree Farm Road, and I'm also Chairman of the Conservation Commission. Patrick and I had a brief conversation about this, and some of the things mentioned were the trees that may have to be come, cut down, the trees that may have to be cut down, the stone wall or barrier keep the erosion from coming up onto the shore, changing the boat ramp, which if it's slippery, it's in the water, it's gonna get slippery again. Um, erosion, which should be addressed, but I think the town could probably do that. Um, my issue is that some of the things that may be proposed are some of the things that we've had to deal with around the, the bowl for years now. Um, tree removal, removal you take big trees down, you don't plant a six foot tree in its place and expect the same, same type of thing. If you're building some sort of retaining wall, that keeps, keeps the, the critters from coming up on shore. And they can't climb up a stone wall or a brick wall or whatever kind of wall it is. So just, just there, we were gonna have some impacts that we deal with and try to keep from happening. Granted, this is a design and a study and a proposal, but I think we should, as a town, be pretty much involved in this planning right from the start. Uh, if they throw some plans at us, we should be the first ones to speak up and say, this is not something we want to do here. We're okay with improvements, but we don't need all the big trees cut down unless they're deemed a hazard. Um, and planting little trees and a five gallon bucket's not gonna cut it. Um, and, the, and what other improvements, I heard mention of a kayak ramp or boat ramp or a little, some sort of little boat, something going out in the water so people can get in and out of their boats without stepping in the water, I guess. I don't know how that works, but. Um, so there's, so there's so many things that this $25,000 could be used for by the town itself if we were gonna go that route, but to expect another 25,000 from the state and then see it go nowhere for years or end up being $125,000, which we may have to chip in again for. It's the state's property. If they plan to do something with it and they have a plan, we may object to their plan too. But if it's state run, there's a lot of things we object to and we have no voice in. 
so there's, there's issues here. As for being for or against this $25,000, I think it's premature if the state won't come to the table and say, yes, we'll fund some of this. That's it. So the 25000 if we did vote it tonight, would be provisional only if the state kicked in 25000 too. And what are the odds of that happening? They've already agreed. Well, that's different. I mean, they have an email, but I don't know. Hmm. Assuming that emails count. Yeah. Okay, is there any further discussion? Seeing none, we'll proceed to vote. All those in favor of transferring and appropriating $25,000 for engineering, design, and permitting for improvements to the boat ramp at Stockbridge Bowl, contingent on the 25,000 match from the department, DCR, Department of Conservation and Recreation. All those in favor of this $25,000 expenditure, please press one for yes or two for no. Section 8 passed 96 to 44. 96 to 44. And we now go on to Article 13. Article 13. I move that the town appropriate from the available sewer available surplus the expenses for the year as read by the moderator accepting those items held with each item to be considered a separate appropriation. Okay, we've dropped about 50 voters, so let's uh, try to move along here. Uh, you're gonna make me read this, huh? Appropriate from uh, the community, pres uh, CPA, all right, can we do that? No, can't do it. Community Preservation Undesignated Fund 13. 13. No. Number one, Article 13. Transfer and appropriate $259,800 for the purpose of funding the Collection System Management Program Phase 4. Transfer and appropriate 49990 for the purpose of funding the sewer needs analysis project. Transfer and appropriate 36500 for the purpose of funding the replacement of the sludge pump at the wastewater treatment plant. Transfer and appropriate $12,300 for the purpose of funding the overhaul three raw wastewater pumps at the wastewater treatment plant. Does anyone want to hold any of these? Seeing none, we'll proceed to vote in mass. No further discussion? Any further discussion? None, okay. I can't see with those on. All those in favor of sections one, two, three, and four of article 13, please press one for yes. Two for no. Article thirteen has passed one nineteen to one. Article 14. I move that the town appropriate from available water operations reserve fund the expenses for the year as read by the moderator, accepting those items held 
with each item to be considered a separate appropriation. Article 14, Section 1. Transfer and appropriate $30,000 reserve fund for the purpose of funding the installation of new gate valves. Section 2. Transfer and appropriate $25,000 for the purpose of funding the engineering for Elm Street and Maple Street's water main replacement. Number three, transfer and appropriate $23,000 for the purpose of funding three new online analyzers for the water treatment plant. Number four, transfer and appropriate $48,000 for the purpose of funding the painting of the interior of the water treatment plant. Are there any holds? Seeing none, proceed to vote on Article 14, inclusive. No. Nobody wants discussion, we're not going to have it. <laughs> the only problem is, Gave me too many papers today. Okay. We'll proceed to vote on Article 14, including the four subsections. All those in favor of Article 14, 1 through 4, please press 1 for yes or 2 for no. Article 14 has passed by identical score, 119 to 1. Article 15. We're well, pretty close to the end, folks. Um, Article 15. I move that the town appropriate or reserve for future appropriation monies from Community Preservation Fund annual re revenues specific reserves or other available funds for the administrative expenses of the Community Preservation Committee, the payment of debt, debt service, the undertaking of community preservation projects and all other necessary and proper expenses for the year as read by the moderator, accepting those items held, would each item be considered a separate appropriation, and further, that the town authorize the Board of Selectmen to execute agreements on terms acceptable to the board to the extent necessary to effectuate the public benefits of such projects. Thank you. Article 15, Section 1. Appropriate from the Community Preservation Under Designated Fund Balance a sum of $50,000 for the affordable housing purposes to be used by Riverbrook for the replacement of a fire escape. Appropriate from the Community Preservation Undesignated Fund balance a sum of 15000 for the affordable housing purposes to be used by Stockbridge Housing Authority for the heat and court walkway lighting. Now, any holds, just shout it right out on any of these, okay? Three, appropriate from the Community Preservation Undesignated Fund Balance a sum of $125,000 for community housing purposes to be used by Pine Woods for reconstruction of the driveway. Appropriate from the Community Preservation Undesignated Fund Balance a sum of $20,000 for affordable housing purposes to be used by Stockbridge Housing Authority for heat and court siding board replacement. Appropriate from the Community Preservation Undesignated Fund Balances, would you mind if I call that the CPUF? Can I get away with that? Thanks. The sum of $42,000 for the historic preservation purposes to be used by the Town of Stockbridge 
Cemetery Commission for the restoration of the sergeant tomb slabs. Appropriate from the CPUF fund of balance, a sum of $185,617 for the historic preservation purposes to be used by Waldorf School for the preservation of Old Town Hall. There's a hold on six, and that was by a hand, so I'll know who to refer to. Who wanted to hold it? Nobody? We're not going to discuss it now. So, seven, appropriate from the community. Oh, well. Preservation undesignated fund balance, a sum of $20,000 for open space recreational purposes to use by Laurel Hill for capital improvements to the Mary Flynn Trail. Eight, appropriate from the CPUF balance for open space and recreational purposes, a sum of $11,500 to be used by the Stockbridge Bull Association for work at Bullard Woods to preserve open space by removal of invasive species and required permitting. Appropriate from the CPUF balance for open space and recreation purposes, the sum of $300,000 to be used by the Stockbridge Land Trust for acquisition of the Finn Farm Swan property. Ten. Appropriate from the CPUF balance for open space and recreational purposes, the sum of $11,917 to be used by the Friends of Gold Meadows for work at Gold Meadows to preserve open space by remo removal of innovation species, improve recreational walkways, tree and garden work. 11. Appropriate from the CPUF balance a fund of $5,000 $200 for open space recreational purposes to be used by the Stockbridge Conservation Commission to conserve the Footbird Sanctuary property. Number 12, appropriate from the CPUF balance a sum of $3,875 for historic preservation purposes to, use, to be used by Stockbridge Library to conserve and repair the 19th century daguerreotype photos by Anson Clark of West Stockbridge. 13, appropriate from the CPUF balance a sum of $10,000 for the fiscal year 24 CPC administrative budget. And finally, number 14, to reserve the historic resor resources reserve, community housing reserve, and open space reserve from Community Preservation Anticipated Fiscal Year 24 Annual Revenues, the minimum amounts required by MGL C44B 6S6 expected request of $44,310. Did that stay the same? Yes, okay. Article 15 in its entirety minus Six and nine, we'll proceed. Is there any discussion on those two? No holds. We'll proceed to vote on one, two, three, four, five, seven, eight, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, and fourteen. All those in favor of those, please press one for yes or two for no. Those items minus six and nine have passed 108. Yes, seven, no. We'll now take up the two holes. Number six. Yeah, Neil Haywood, New Inter Lake and Road. Okay, I was just well, curious to, as Neil, hang on one second. We have to read. Oh, uh, sorry. I just would like to point out I'm, I am an employee of the Berkshire Waldorf High School, uh, the CFO, so I'm going to recuse myself and turn over. Uh, number six to Jamie Minacci. Thank you. 
I move that the town appropriate $185,000 or $185,617 from the CPUF for Proctor's Hall. Okay, Neil. Neil Haywood, 32 Interlaken Road. Um, it says to be used by the Waldorf School. Do they now own the property? That's just my question. Michael? Um, they, have, they have not finalized yet, so this would be contingent on, the, on them getting approval for the sale from the church. There's the answer. Any further? Yes. Um, can you hear me? Teresa O'Brien, 2 Pine Street, Board of Trustees of the Walter High School. Um, just everybody should get a little explanation here. We're close to finalizing the deal with the Congregational Church to purchase the building and renovate it. Uh, we have an estimate of about $6 million we raised Oh, more than half of that and this particular um, CP uh, funds whatever it is would be for ADA compliance where there's going to be a um, what the side entrance made that's brought down to street level so that wheelchair access is available and inside um, an elevator which we need for code but we plan to open the large room upstairs up for public use. And um, so anybody that would want to, when this not school use, when the parking is available, the building would be available for community use and it would be, uh, have an elevator. So it would be handicap accessible for all. And I just thought everybody deserved that explanation for this large sum of money. Thank you, Sally. The Community Preservation Commission was endorsing this particular project for a number of reasons. Um, not only because the town has borne the burden financially for Proctor Hall for all the years since we've been in here, and I, I don't remember when that happened, but we've had to re-roof it. We, the building is potentially deteriorating due to its lack of use. So the idea that someone would come in and, and be a part of our community and um, take over this building to relieve the burden of the upkeep from the town was very appealing. The other thing that was very appealing about this particular project was the idea. The Waldorf School um, enjoys a reputation for bringing people in from afar. And so one of the other benefits of this particular project is that it's likely to bring in families um, to our community with children, which I already talked about. Um, and so for us, it seemed like a win-win situation. Further discussion, Nick? Nick Nadorf, 12 Pine Street, adjacent to the current Waldorf School. It's a fine school. They're great kids. I'm in favor of whatever we can do as a town to help them. My curiosity, though, is I've always understood that Proctor Hall was on property owned by the church, and the town, Stockbridge, owned the building. Could someone clarify that? And my second concern, being a member of the golf club with Jim Belfounts, what's going to be the arrangement for parking? Because we utilize the parking for weekends, tournaments, things like that. Have we worked out any schedule arrangement with the Waldorf people in terms of parking for the Stockbridge Golf Club? Thank you. Michael? So at this point, the land is owned by the church. The building is owned by the town. But the, it, the lease was contingent on the town using the building as its town hall. 
now that we are no longer using it as a town hall, uh, once the lease is terminated by the church, which would be them coming to us and saying they are no longer going to um, lease the land to us, then at that time the building would become um, the property of the church. It would take, since it would have no value because we don't control the land and we can't lease it, we can't rent it, we can't do anything else, it would take a motion by the selectmen um, to declare that the building has no value and therefore we would give up our right to contest any uh, attempt by the church to vacate the property because we are no longer using it as a town hall. This would clear up those contingencies. So we're just waiting for that to happen. And once that happens, then we can take votes to see that the building can be used for a different purpose. Hopefully that answers the question. Um, Bronley Boyd uh, for Pixley Hill Road. And I am also a trustee of the First Congregational Church. And I can tell you we're very far down the road at making this project happen. Um, we are in three-way agreement discussions with the Stockbridge Golf Club, uh, Waldorf, and the church to make sure we all work together. We will have right-of-ways back and forth. The town is, is involved in that as well. Michael's been very helpful for us to, to move this along. And I think um, we're as close as we've ever been to put somebody in that building. Thank you, Valerie. Charlie? Yes, Charlie Kenny Meadow Road. Uh, I'd like to ask a question. Does it, would it make sense to add an amendment that might read, comma, contingent upon acquiring ownership of the property? So one of the things that we will be implementing through the uh, Community Preservation Committee is grant assurance agreements. And in the grant assurance agreements, the CPC committee stipulated that that would be included, that before any CPC funds are transferred, that they would have to have control of the property. So that takes care of the legal requirements of that match. So the amendment wouldn't be necessary? Correct. Any further discussion on section six of article 15? Seeing none, we'll proceed to vote. All those in favor of article six, please press one for yes, two for no. Section six is passed, 104 to 10. Section nine. Section nine, appropriate from the community preservation undesignated fund balance for open space and recreation purposes, a sum of $300,000 to be used by the Stockbridge Land Trust for the acquisition of the Fen Farm a case one property. Another second? Second. Richard? Rich Bradway, East Main Street. I'm also the president of the Stockbridge Land Trust. At this time, the Stockbridge Land Trust would like to withdraw its request for $300,000 and ask that you vote no action on this appropriation, which would effectively mean voting no. Thank you. Is there a second? We need a second. Is there a second? We should have we should have rehearsed this. Do you, do you want me to? What? Some some people have asked me to indicate why. So the Fen property is uh, effectively on the corner of Cherry Street and Sky Farm Road. It is the northern tip of Monument Mountain, and it goes down to Agawam Lake. Um, at the time that we placed this request. Uh, I, the Stockbridge Land Trust and the Berkshire National Resources Council worked with the Swan family to, to update an appraisal on the property, which came to $2.2 million. Um, as a result of the sale of Agawam Lake back in the mid-90s, the state of Massachusetts through the uh, Mass Department of Fisheries and Wildlife, or Mass Wildlife, had the first right of refusal on the property. Uh, and so we worked with Mass Wildlife and 
the land trust and BNRC to come up with a, a financing or funding plan to appropriate that land and conserve it. At the time, the state would not have the full amount, and so the land trust and BNRC were seeking, to, uh, were sourcing funds either through private uh, donations or money within our own coffers, and as well as this request through the CPC to appropriate the property and conserve it. After we placed this request to the CPC, the Stockbridge Muncie community came forward and indicated that they would like to purchase the land. And they would like to do so through, the, through what is called a Municipal Vulnerabilities Program Action Grant. And so at that time, the state who had the first right of refusal uh, acknowledged this and uh, basically waived their first right of refusal to allow the Stockbridge Muncie community to proceed with this intent. Because these circumstances have changed and, 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 and as such not needing the money, this is the reason why we're withdrawing the request. We are working, the Stockbridge Land Trust and the BNRC, Berkshire Natural Resources Council, will be working, uh, as, uh, we worked with them to help them apply for this MVP grant, and we will also be working with them on a conservation plan that will cover the entire property in perpetuity. Hey, I just want to add that, that uh, the town worked very closely uh, on this project. Simply, it just now will not require any town funding. So I'm going to make an, a, a motion that we amend uh, number nine uh, to take no action. Thank you. Is there a second to the amendment? Any discussion? Seeing none, we'll proceed to vote on section nine. All those in favor of the amendment, we're, not, we're voting on the amendment to withdraw. All those in favor of accepting that amendment, please press one. Those opposed, press two. The amendment to withdraw has been accepted, 110, yes, two, no. Article 16, oh. Oh, that's amendment. Amendment. Yeah, have have it's voted on the amendment. Yeah. Yeah. I was hoping that would be a shortcut. We voted on the amendment, and as we all know, we now have to vote on Section 9, as amended, therefore, we'll say, is there any further discussion? Seeing none, we're going to vote on Article 15, Section 9, as amended. Those in favor of the, uh, of the uh, motion as amended, which withdraws it, please vote one for yes. Those opposed, two for no. Okay, 79 yes, one no, as amended. We only have a couple more articles, so I hope enough stay so we have a quorum at the end. Yeah. Article 16. I move that the town vote to adjust the exemption amount from 500 to $1,000 and adjust the minimum age from 70 to 65, year old, 65 years old for the property tax exemption for senior citizens under MGL Chapter 59, uh, Section 5, Clause 41C, to be effective for exemptions granted for any fiscal year beginning on or after July 2023. And I would personally like to uh, thank the Board of Assessors, who did great work on the next two amendments, on the next two articles, uh, in uh, in putting these forward at town meeting. Thank you. Uh, 
Is there any discussion on Article 16? Seeing none, see the vote. All those in favor of Article 16, please press 1 for yes, 2 for no. Article 16 has passed, 97 yes, 4 no. Article 17. I move that the town vote to amend the parameters of the senior tax deferral program authorized under Mass General Law, Chapter 59, Section 5, Clause 41A by increasing the maximum income limit for participation from $20,000 to the limit allowed for the circuit breaker state income tax credit for non-head of household filers annually and reducing the interest rate for repayment from 8% to 5%. Article 17 has been moved and seconded. Is there any discussion? Seeing none, we'll proceed to vote. All those in favor of Article 17, please press one for yes, two for no. Article 17 has passed, 91 yes, 5 no. Article 18. I move that the town vote to accept the provisions under Mass General Law, Section 21A, uh, 200, uh, 200A, 9A, to provide an alternative procedure to dispose of abandoned funds in the custody of the town. Article 18 has been moved and seconded. Is there any discussion? You want an explanation? Michael. Currently under Mass General Law, unclaimed checks are refunded to the state. So if we paid a vendor and they haven't cashed the check after three years, the money is actually refunded to the state by passing this article. This would enable these funds to be deposited in the general funds of the town. <laughs> if we get a no vote on this, we're going to have to we're going to have to find that malfunctioning clicker. All those in favor? Well, first, any further discussion? Seeing none. All those in favor of Article 18, please click one for yes, two for no. Unanimous, 103, zero. Article 19. I move that the town vote to initiate the process to aggregate electoral load pursuant to Mass General Law, Chapter 164, Section 134. And just to explain, this would give us the ability to join a municipal aggregation as have something like 16 other towns in Berkshire County. Um, which would, you know, if you're paying attention, when rates spiked up last year, uh, the folks who had been in the aggregation program didn't see the spike because they had a, uh, a contract to kind of smooth out and, you know, and aggregate the purchase. Thank you. Did I hear the second? Yes. Article 19 has been moved and seconded. Is there any discussion? Seeing none, we'll proceed to vote. All those in favor, please say aye. <laughs> <laughs> Nostalgia. 
All those in favor, please press one for yes, two for no. Is there any other business that should properly come before this meeting at this time? Okay, the final vote on Article 19, 102 to zero. It approved. At this point, I just want to thank Finance Committee for the wonderful job they've done for the town. And our town is the envy of many, many, many towns in this county, if not all of them. Our tax rate is so low, and it's because of the diligent work they have done, and they're going to continue doing. And I would like to thank you all. Are you going to None. None. <laughs> at, at, at this point, seeing no further business to be conducted at this point, I move that the annual town meeting be adjourned to tomorrow for voting. Everyone, please get out and vote. Is there a second? All those in favor, if you still have your clicker, say aye. Thank you.